Spain won, Italy nil. As you guys know, I am Gli Azuri, I'm an Azuri fan, and yeah, this this is this is not turning out well for me. Um, before we continue, guys, revolution is happening in Kenya to all my Kenyan uh, brothers and sisters, Kenyan fans, box to box. Revolution is happening. Find a way to get involved. Like you need to be part of of you need to be part of what is happening and the future because this bill is affecting all of us and will affect all of us. Um, yeah, join the revolution. Um, yeah, so Spain beat Italy 1-0 um, thanks to uh, Califiori on goal. Uh, before we continue, I just want to tell you guys that the reason why we lost is because, as our name suggests, where is Azuri, the blues. We're used to playing in blue, not in white. So, like, we, we, we really didn't, we didn't know. It really confused us. You know, we didn't know where our teammates were. We didn't know where our... We couldn't see properly. Like, yeah, that's 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 my biggest reason for our loss today. But in all fairness, Spain deserved this game. Spain just dominated us from the get-go. Spain were, and this is a complete uh, role reversal from how they played in the last game. Croatia really finished them in the first game, in the first like 15 minutes, in terms of just possessing the ball, creating chances. And I was like, is this the Spain that I'm used to? Like, Spain were now playing like. Spain were now playing like a team that just parks the bus. It was the first time that they lost the possession battle in 130-something games. That is goes years back um, in that last game against Croatia. They still won 3 nil, but those are stats that, as a Spaniard, they're just like, yo, like, <laughs> this is not us. Um, but yeah, this was um, a really good performance from Spain, I must admit. One thing that I saw that really caught my eye early is the Spaniards were not scared to shoot. And what told me that this was their game plan? Because, you know, you can see someone shoot from the outside. You see Fabian Ruiz do it. If you see Morata do it, you're like, okay, this is a, a striker, an attacking midfielder, and they really want to get that goal, yeah? But when you see Rodri doing it, that's when you know it's a game plan. Rodri is one of the most disciplined central midfielders. He will only shoot when he needs to. He will mostly fake that he's shooting and then lay it off or chip it for that run, you know? So when Rodri is... I think almost, I think twice, if I'm not wrong, took shots from outside the box, you knew that's the game plan. Um, and it, it's almost like a basketball play where it's like, if I'm a three-point shooting team, right, um, and I'm, I don't have someone who can score from under the basket, I'll let you, I'll not let you shoot threes. I'll funnel you to where your weakness is. Your weakness is under the rim. The same thing the opposite way. If you're really good at scoring under the rim and you don't have people who can shoot threes, I will force you to shoot threes. Shoot as many as you want, right? But if I'm a good team and I have both, I can score under the basket and I can shoot threes. Now it's a matter of, I want to see what you give me as a defense, right? I'm going to shoot from three and then every once in a while, I'm going to go attack you and, and score from the middle. So when, when you're an offense, a dynamic offense, you have to show different looks so that the defense is on its toes. You're like, oh, are they going to shoot? Are they going to come in? Are they going to cut back? Are they going to make those runs? And I feel like Spain did exactly that, right? Every once in a while, it was a shot from Morata. It was a shot from Fabian Ruiz, uh, Rodri as well, Nico Williams, Lamin Yamal, everyone. All those guys had shots at goal. Ferran Torres, when he came on, all those guys had shots at goal. But then, again, at certain periods, on certain periods, it would be Kukurea bombing down the the, the wing. Uh, by the way, speaking of Kukurea, Kukurea. That's, his, that's, Kukurea. That's, that's his new one. Um, Kukurea bombing down the wing. Kukurea playing a one-two. Or you have uh, Fabian Ruiz running into the box. Pedri making those late runs into the box. They they just vary the attack in such a brilliant way. Like, as an opposing coach, you'd be like, okay, who do I stop? Where do I start? And to me, that is more... That, that is, like, in terms of tactical awareness, like, just knowing yourself and knowing what to throw at the opponents because they know Italy is a good team and they don't want to give they don't want to give Italy the ball a lot. Again, I was very disappointed with how whenever we got the ball we'd almost lose it almost immediately. Like we were very careless with the ball. We were not our build up play disappeared. All the good stuff I saw from Spalletti's team in the first game, I wasn't seeing. I wasn't seeing a good high press. I wasn't seeing a uh, calm play from the back um beating the press like especially in the first half i don't think that even happened you know so yeah italy we we this was a very uh, this was this was not a good performance not a good performance at all from the italians my standout player in this game believe it or not was mark kukurea 
Mark Kukurea. Kukurea. This guy, I don't know, I don't know, Poch unlocked something in him. He's solid. He is solid. He's not getting beaten in any one-on-ones. He doesn't lose el- um, aerial duels. He's bombing forward at the same time. When it comes to defensive transition, he's always there. Kukurea is actually becoming a key player in this Spanish team. I thought he was just picked off because of, ah, it's Kukurea. Sort of how they used to pick Aritha Balaga. Yet they have Unai Simon and all these guys and De Gea. Kukurea is impressive. I'm not even going to lie. He's, he's playing even better than how he was playing at Brighton. He's just his all-round game. There's no one thing where he's doing great. I guess I guess the one thing he's doing better than anything is is defending. His one-on-one defending is really good. He he reads danger early. So like even in the last game, if you saw, he's the one who had the last ditch block that prevented um, uh, Croatia from scoring at least one goal late in the game. He was immense. He was immense. Poch really unlocked something in this guy, and he's going to be one of the key players. He's going to be one of Maresca's key players going back to Chelsea. And for Spain, moving forward in this tournament, Kukurea is... Phew, phew, I was blown. I was blown away. Honestly, I was. Um, someone else who had a really good game for me, um, Lamin Yamal. Nico Williams was immense as well. Like, the amount of trouble this guy scored, uh, caused on that wing. I think even the goal came from his cross. Morata just flicked it on and then it was an own goal. Califiori on goal. Calafiori is one of those guys I have looked at him. 22-year-old plays for Bologna, really solid player. I've been like, yo, these are the kids for the future. This is how you just spot a young Maldini somewhere. Um, but today they were really outplayed. Chiesa, again, I keep saying, I have never seen a, I've never seen him pass a ball. Again, today I've not seen him pass the ball. I'd be very surprised if he passed the ball. Um, it's probably one of those ones where he was given and passed it back and ran, you know, in his own half or something, or had to pass it. Barella was okay. Jorginho was just there. Like, he was just there. Um, I think for Italy, our bright spots were obviously Donnarumma. He prevented quite a number of crucial... He had a number of crucial blocks and, um, yeah, basically kept us in the game most of the game. In terms of an outlet, Di Marco was the only outlet we had. But then Skamaka was almost non-existent up front. Fratesi on the right side also was just... There was just a lot of average performances, to be fair. Like, Donnarumma is the only person and Di Marco who really, really tried to take the team forward. Whereas for Spain, anyone you think about was just progressive in their passing, progressive in their carries. Fabian Ruiz, Pedri, Lamin Yamal was, again, how is this kid 16 years old? He was really impressive, yeah. So for me, Kukurea, I know many people will pick Nico Williams because, to be honest, he was really good. Um, If you pick him for man of the match, I won't complain. But for me, Kukurea just nullified that entire right wing. There's nothing Italy did. There's nothing Fratesi did. There is nothing Di Lorenzo did. And attacking-wise, they really destroyed Di Lorenzo on that wing. Like, Di Lorenzo was having a tough time, a tough time. It, like, they were coming at him every way possible. It was either a two-on-one, a three-on-one. Um, Pedri would come drifting towards that side. Morata was drifting towards that side. Um, him and Nico Williams were literally going up on him. And then when he thought he was had, he had it covered, Kukurea is there coming. So... Yeah, man. Spain are looking good. Spain are looking really, really good. They've more or less sewn up this group. Six points. They've qualified for the round of 16. And yeah, let's see how they do moving forward. And that is Spain versus Italy. Spain win 1-0 and in the round of 16. Italy, we still have a bit more work to do, but um, I'm sure a win will get us through as well.